Welcome back to Excel Part 3. Recap on last episode, we looked at how to enter functions into our cells. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a graph using Excel, as well as inputting all of the beautiful things that you see in a graph, including titles, the trend line, the equations, and the error bars, all included in one package. So let's get started right away. What we're going to do is we're going to graph over here. We're going to graph the period on the Y and the length as the X. And notice this is for one period, not for 10, which is why we divided everything by 10 in our last lesson. To make a chart, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go straight into insert. So I'm going to click on insert in the top tab. I'm going to go find the charts. Under the charts, there's many charts over here. I'm going to specifically select for the scatter plot. So just the points itself, no lines, no bars, nothing else. I click on this and I'm going to click on this little scatter, just a scatter. The reason why I'm not selecting data as most of you know to do is because my columns are everywhere. I want to select the data manually myself. So I'm going to click on scatter. This gives me a box where I can put on my graph to get my data. I right click on the graph or the box, right click, go to select data, click on it. And here I'm going to add, I'm going to add and it pops up this thing over here. I can give my series a name if I want to, I'm too lazy to do it. So I'm not going to do it but I do need to enter the X values. The X values I will select here. This little up arrow allows me to select my X values, which are my lengths. Click, select the length values over here. Go back, to go back, you click on this down box, is to drop down back into the window. Now you need the Y values. The Y values, same thing. You click on this up for upload, if you wanna think of it that way. And we're going to use the time average divided by 10 because this gives me the time for one period. So you select the data, you download or you go back and then you press OK because you're done and press OK again. Here is your beautiful data. We need this graph needs a little bit more things, components, including the title, which is on there, but it needs axis title as well. To get my axis title, there's a few ways you can do it. If you have my version, you can click on this little plus sign, chart elements, and there's a check box. I'm going to check axis title. That gives me both my axes. I believe if you have another version, you might be able to do something else. But always, if you have your graph clicked, you have a little highlighted tab, which includes chart tools, design, and format. It seems like for my version, if I click on design, I can also do this manually by clicking on add chart element. I click and I can select some of these below myself. Okay, so that is another option if you have another version. Otherwise, you have your titles. I'm gonna give my chart a title. You need a descriptive title, don't forget. Also, I'm gonna make a y-axis title. Don't forget the units. Here is length. I prefer you to graph length in meters as opposed to centimeters. It makes it easier for you to analyze later. If you did graph it in centimeters, you're going to have one extra step. If not, make your life a little more complicated later on down the road. This is how you would enter your titles and axes. You add them and you click in the box and type them out yourself. Next up, we have finding the trend line. To add the trend line, you go to this plus sign again. I click. I go to trend line, ah, but I want to make sure I select the right one. So I'm going to go to this arrow. I'm going to click on this arrow to give me more options. So I'm going to click on more options down here. I can now select which trend line I want. Okay. This is not what I want. I don't want to format its color or effects. I want to go to trend line options. Notice a little bar here that gives me trend line options. I don't want a linear graph. I don't want a linear fit because it doesn't look like a linear fit. Also, based off my knowledge of physics, principles and concepts, we should get a square root graph. When you're doing your own lab, you should be able to know the relationship prior so you can select the right graph yourself. Otherwise, sometimes you're looking for the particular shape to model the to best model your data. I'm going to go to power because 
x to the power of a half, which is a square root of x, is a power. Click on power, bam, that gives me a power. That's how you show a trend line. How to display the equation? You go all the way down and you click on this, check this box, display equation on chart. Click and there's that right there. I'm going to click on this guy and I'm going to move the box a little bit over so you can see a little bit better. And there we have it. This is the equation of this graph that you've produced on Excel. The last thing to do is to add in the error bars. To add in the error bars, you click on this plus. Some of you might have add chart elements on the top uh, toolbox over here. Press on plus to add error bars. And I want my own error bars. I want to make them myself. I don't want uh, Excel to tell me what to do. And that just reminds me, I need to tell Excel exactly what the length uncertainties are. So I'm going to have to backtrack and make another set of data. I'm going to close this to give me some extra space. Move this over a bit. I need to tell Excel what my length uncertainty is in meters. My length uncertainty in meters some of you might have a little different than I do, and it depends on your situation. So in your lab, if you found it difficult to measure the actual length, your uncertainty might be different than mine. Remember, this one I'm telling you is based off of hard rules. What I'm going to type in is half the smallest gradient on the meter stick, which is half a millimeter. In meters, it turns out to be 0 0.0005. Notice that the place value, ah, look, it doesn't display it. So I have to right click this, format the cells, and I'm going to have to display four decimal places to see the five. Notice the decimal place here for the uh, place value for your uncertainty matches the last place value in your length itself. Uncertainty place value matches that with the last place value in your data. I'm going to use this for my horizontal error bars, which is why I'm typing this now. Again, to add in my error bars, I click on my graph, press the plus sign, and because I want custom error bars, I'm going to click on this arrow, go to more options, and this allows me to select for vertical and for horizontal just by doing this. First, I'm going to tell the horizontal error bars. To select for horizontal error bars, I'm going to physically click on the horizontal error bar on my graph, and notice this title changes to horizontal error bar. I am going to, I could enter the fixed value, which is exactly the same thing on my Excel, or I can customly put it in. I'm going to put in the fixed value just so I can show you once what it looks like. So I'm going to put 0 0.0005, and Excel automatically knows that it's using the scale on your graph for your x-axis. That will be okay. Or you can customly put it in. But I'm going to show you how to do that for your Y uncertainties. We're done with the X. So we click on the Y error bars. Okay. Notice that the X error bars have now shrunk because obviously it's very tiny. For vertical error bars, I'm going to need to put it in everything myself. I'm not going to type everything in, of course. I will click on custom. I will specify the value. The upper range is going to be click on the, so what I did was I clicked on this upload here. I'm going to select my uncertainties, which is this column here, which is T average divided by 10 uncertainty, is the uncertainty for one period. Select, go back, the down button, and I'm going to do the same thing for the lower range. Click on the up arrow, select the date, select the uncertainties, down arrow, and OK. And there we have it, all of these little tiny error bars. Now, I've shown you, or we've gone, gone over, that your trend line should go through all your error bars. That's in an ideal situation. You want to try to do that as much as you can. But sometimes it doesn't work out. In this case, Excel just did it for you. But if you ever have to draw this out yourself, when you're drawing your best fit line, you're sketching your best fit line as best as you could between all your data points and as many error bars as you can. If it doesn't cross your error bars, then maybe that suggests something about your data. That's a good thing to discuss in the, your evaluation of your discussion or your discussion of your lab report. That's everything to do with the graphs. Recap on what we did. We made a graph by selecting some data. We were able to put in 
graph elements such as your titles, your axes, we were able to add a trend line and display the equation on the chart. Also, we were able to put in error bars into our graph. This is what this video covered. In episode four, we will be propagating some errors because we're going to try to linearize this graph. So the next video is going to focus on producing the linearized graph of the one you see here. Hopefully you got something out of this video and maybe I will see you in episode four. Thank you for watching. Bye now.